Hey guys, Darren back again. Uh, I've just picked up this NES clone controller from China. It's built to, you know, NTSC specs. Uh, and for those that don't know, yeah, there's region lockouts on the controllers, or actually on the on the consoles. So I'm in Australia. This is a PAL console, and our controllers are set up to work with our consoles, and vice versa for America and Japan. So when you buy a clone controller, like I have, and want to use it on your PAL console, it doesn't work. I've plugged this in and you get absolutely nothing. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you what's going on and I'll show you how to fix it so you can pick up a cheap, you know, $5 controller and get it working on your PAL console. So luckily I've got the uh, EverDrive N8 card loaded and I've got the controller test loaded on that and I just thought I'd run a quick controller test on my standard port and controller first to make sure that was okay. So I just got the PAL one here. Let me just put, point you at the screen um, and that all works fine. So up, down, left, right, select, start, B and A, that's all fine. Now, if I swap this over for the, cl the clone controller, uh, it doesn't work at all. Nothing responds. For those that are interested, that's the one I use, that one there. So it's Nintendo World Class Service Joystick Test Cartridge USA. So we load that one. Controller test. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Normal. I've already tested it, and the clone controller plugged into either port does not work. So let me uh, pop the lid of the case. We'll take a look behind the controller port and we'll see what's going on. Okay, so uh, undo the screws from underneath your console. There's just six of them. Pop the lid. Then you'll come to the RF shield. Um, there's screws all the way around the edges, just in places like here, uh, there, and, and all around. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and pull that out. Um, and then the, the RF shield will just lift out. Then you lift with your console like this. Um, so that's as far as we need to go in this case. You probably don't even really need to take that shield off, but I'm getting ready for another mod actually, which I'm going to do after this video. So stay tuned and I'll show you that one as well. But right now let's focus on these controller ports. And what you need to do next is probably just take the plugs out. Is actually flip it up on its end and you'll notice there's two Phillips head screws. Uh, just there underneath so just go ahead and back them out put them in the dish keep all the screws tidy they're all these ones are a little bit different so you're not going to get them mixed up but it's good practice to keep them all tidy okay so then uh, this little black plastic shield will just lift up like that remove that and we get exposed to the controllers so this first one here is controller one, and that plugs into the board here. This one is controller two, and that runs round and plugs into there. So this is the one I want to modify today. So just give it a bit of a wiggle and feed it out like that, and turn it over. And you'll notice, you'll notice on the bottom there's, uh, you know, just connectors. And if you just look at the the board side of these connectors, you'll see these little diodes there. So if you look at these components here with the sort of the red stripe on them, there that's a diode. And that symbol with the straight line and a triangle and a line across the top, that symbol represents a diode, which, which represents one way current flow. So this side is negative and this side is positive. So current will flow in that direction. So Nintendo have put some trickery inside these. Um, so these diodes will just block one flow of direction. And when you plug in the controller, there's corresponding electronics inside that just respond to that. And you'll find the PAL controllers will work fine, but not on a US console and vice versa is what we've found today. The clone controller, which is basically a US controller, doesn't work on the PAL console. So instead of opening up your, your controller and you know modifying every controller you get, which is a pain, I would rather just modify the port. 
do the job once and it should work for all controllers you plug in. So the PAL controllers will still work. Uh, they're unaffected and the NTSC and clone ones will also work fine. There's no downsides. So what we need to do is basically just bridge these connections. So the diode blocks the flow of current. So we just need to re-enable that flow of current. And we can do that by, um, if we look at underneath this particular one here, this top one, there's, there are the two pins there. So if we just join those two pins together on the back side, we've effectively bypassed the diode in both directions, if you know what I mean. So currently it allows current to flow in one direction by putting a little bridge wire across that and, and basically all the diode points right around the board um, that will allow any control to work on the system. So one, two, three, four, five, six diodes. So we need to put in six links and that should be it. So let me go ahead and get the soldering iron all set up. I'll put the links in and we'll give it a test. Okay, so to get ourselves all set up, um, you need one of these sort of helping hand alligator clip things just to hold things in place. Um, and it's probably also advisable to pull out um, the connector. So just pull the connector out off the board and just mount it something like this. You know, you can clip onto the plastic like that. Just move your console for a second and you'll have pretty good control. So just tighten all this up. Okay. And we can pretty clearly see the points we need to solder. It's these two here and these two here, those two, those two, those two, and the inner two up the top. So I'll just go ahead and add a little bit of solder to all of those points. Um, and then we'll run our jumper across. They're not too fine, this work. It's not that fine and difficult, so you're probably okay. Now, the type of wire that you choose to bridge uh, depends on you, really. I've just got a bunch of uh, extremely useless and cheap resistors, um, which I don't use, these particular ones. So I'll just use the legs. These legs are absolutely good to go. Uh, and the way to do it is to probably just, you know, bend it, hold it in sort of a comfortable position, sort of... Keep in mind, it might get a bit hot if you kind of do this for too long. And then just come in, oh, we'll start over here. Join that side. Join that side. And then snip that clean, right? That's, one of done, it's that easy. Come in with the next one. Oh, that didn't look too good. There you go. That one. That one. Snip that clean. We're not aiming for the neatest job here. Like, it really doesn't matter. As long as it's electrically connected we're good to go snip that one clean I'll probably turn the resistor around now that legs getting a bit short um, let's go up the top do those ones and we'll do this one I like to always stop and cut each one. So you could just keep soldering and cut them all at the end, but it gets a little bit fiddly if I'm honest. So just why make it difficult for yourself? Just do what's, whatever is easier for you. Uh, not quite enough solder on that one, but that's okay. Might add a little bit more to that guy.
Okay. Let's cut that off. And that's it guys, done. So what did that take? About one minute? So then it's just a matter of now of inspecting your work and making sure that you didn't bridge any points that you shouldn't have. So that looks clean, it's not touching. That one looks clean. That one's good, that one's good. They're all good. So just inspect your work, make sure it looks right and then we're okay to put the connector back in the board and give it a test. Okay, and that's it. I've plugged the connector just back into its port. Uh, it's just hanging out still. Uh, and this is the clone one uh, attached, as you can see. It has the rounded buttons uh, and the genuine ones have the concave buttons. So this is definitely a cheap clone controller plugged in and you know I've got Mario running and I'll see if I can quickly show you what's going on. Uh, I can shoot bullets, I can jump, I can move, everything's fine. So it works quite well. What is interesting though is if I just reset that back, if I go back to the controller test, it doesn't actually pass the controller test, which is interesting. So that little bit of uh, homebrew software to test the buttons, it works perfectly on the genuine controllers, but even after you've modified the clone it actually doesn't detect it which is i don't know why but the games run perfectly so there you go uh obviously all the menu system navigates and everything just works so that's all i do to get around that problem uh, i'll show you a more close-up shot just so you can see exactly what's happening and then we'll leave it there so you can see each diode now has a bridge on its corresponding solder side. So the diode there now has a bridge. These three diodes all have bridges. So everything is bridged and it's nice and clean. Well, it's, you know, it's tidy enough and that works. And by all means, go ahead and do it to the second controller port as well. You just pull this one out like that, flip it over, do exactly the same thing if you wanted the second port to work as well. Uh, I'm not going to in this case, I just want port number one to accept clone controllers and port two to whatever, they can just run zapper guns and uh, you know genuine controllers and stuff. So that's it guys. That's how I get around the, the region lock for controllers. And you know what, if I'm, if I'm brutally honest, these little clone controllers from China, they actually work really well. It's also true with the Super Nintendo ones. They actually work pretty well as well. You know, some third-party controllers from China don't work very well, but I've got to say the NES and the, and the SNES controllers work really well. There's actually a really good feel to the buttons. Really nice springy pop to the, uh, like to the actual contacts in there. Uh, and the A and B work really good as well. Physically, it's identical as in shape and size. You know, it's just a little bit simple under here. Um, the buttons are just rounded though. They're rounded tops. So they're a little bit loose in, in the sockets, but they press really well. So I can't complain about that. You know, going back to the original, it is better to have a concaved button. I think it feels really nice. Um, a little bit more control, but you know, for five bucks, this is brilliant. That's how you mod your console. You're good to go. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one, which is back with this console. We're going to do an audio uh, mix mod. We're going to bring in this, the hidden channels um, from games like the Famicom Disk System. All right, guys, thanks for watching.